Stored energy. When working with stored energy or hazardous energy sources, all employees must be sure to verify and control proper isolation and must use the required personal protection equipment. Before work begins, be sure that you have the proper training and skills to perform the job safely and effectively, as well as the understanding of proper methods for energy isolation and of the types, requirements, hazards, and uses of isolation and lockout devices. Validate and verify that you understand the isolations and locks that protect you from danger and ensure that the appropriate isolations, such as lock switches or lock access doors, are in place. Verify that you have access to the appropriate personal protection equipment and that you use it at all times. Hard hats, safety glasses, gloves, work boots, and high visibility vests or shirts are required 100% of the time while on the job. Face shields with safety glasses are required when work may produce any flying fragments. Cut-resistant gloves are to be worn while handling sharp objects. Fall protection. Always protect yourself from falls when using ladders and when working near leading edges, on scaffolds, on aerial lifts, or on uneven or slippery surfaces. Validate and verify that you have the authorization and training required to work at heights over six feet. Employees must know how and when to use fall protection equipment and personal fall arrest systems, which include full body harnesses, shock absorbing lanyards, retractable lifelines, and anchor points. A personal fall arrest system is required in any situation in which you may be exposed to a vertical drop of six feet or more, move to a lower level, or cannot be protected by other fall protection measures. It is important that you are trained in the proper use and inspection of fall protection equipment, and that all personal fall arrest system components have been properly inspected before use. When outside of a protective environment, you must make sure you are always tied off to an approved anchor point. Before mounting scaffolds, always be sure that they are properly inspected and tagged in accordance with the LaChase Scaffold Tagging Program. Cranes and Rigging Per company policy, only properly licensed, certified, and trained persons may perform activities such as operating cranes, rigging loads, or signaling. Employees must follow all proper guidelines for cranes and rigging and be constantly aware of important factors such as suspended loads and swing radius. When on site, always wear a high visibility vest and establish eye contact with the operator when in close proximity. Never walk or stand under a suspended load and never cross a barrier or barricade controlling an area with a suspended load without authorization. If any person enters the swing radius of the equipment, the operator must be notified immediately. Be sure you understand the warning system that notifies you of a suspended load, such as barricades, whistles, and horns. Always follow the instructions provided by the flag person or the person in charge of the lift. You must identify all overhead power lines in your work area and perform all operations as though these lines are energized with lethal voltages. Take every precaution to ensure that power lines do not interfere with your safety, including staying at least 20 feet away from them at all times. Confined spaces. A confined space is defined as an area with limited means of access and egress. It is large enough for an employee to enter and perform work, but it is not designed for continuous occupancy. Before entering into a confined space, you must validate and verify that you have been properly trained, that the atmosphere has been properly tested and documented, and that both the attendant and your supervisor have confirmed safe entry. Entrance points to these spaces must be properly posted with the required permit or non-permit signage, and all requirements of confined space permits must be met. 
be sure you understand the conditions that warrant immediate exit from a confined space, such as difficulty breathing, smelling gas or other unusual odors, or hearing the detection equipment sound, and that you understand the means of rescue. Proper personal protection equipment must be worn at all times while operating within a confined space, and there must always be an established means of communication between entrance and attendance. When in question, exit the space. Excavations. When working in or around excavations, validate and verify that you understand the various systems and practices that protect you from danger, as well as all applicable safety rules. Each employee in an excavation or trench shall be protected from cave-ins by adequate shoring, benching, or other approved protective systems. Exceptions may exist when excavations are less than five feet in depth and the examination of the ground by a competent person provides no indication of a potential cave-in. Before work begins, identify the competent person assigned to be on site and ensure that access and egress points exist and are in accordance with Le Chase and OSHA standards. Verify that you can exit any trench box if inadvertently moved or relocated. Mobile equipment. More than 560 construction employees die every year due to incidents associated with mobile equipment. Before operating any mobile equipment, you must have the appropriate training and authorization and must fully understand the hazards associated with operating and working near mobile equipment. Inspect all forklifts, lulls, and skid steers prior to use and never exit the equipment while the engine is running. Make sure all mobile equipment in your area is equipped with functioning backup alarms to avoid any accidents. And always be sure that you and your coworkers are safely out of the path swing radius of running mobile equipment. Mobile equipment will need maintenance in accordance with manufacturer's guidelines. Before starting equipment and at the start of each shift, be sure all necessary precautions have been taken. That the brakes have been set, the blades and booms have been lowered, the safety blocks and devices are in place, and the operator is fully aware of all nearby employees. Again, high visibility clothing must always be worn around mobile equipment. Finally, be sure your supervisor is notified of any hazardous conditions above and below ground. Caught in, struck by. Over 100 construction workers are killed yearly due to caught in or struck by incidents. Always validate and verify that any potential swing radius and caught in between areas have been identified and controlled. Be sure that all potential pinning or crushing zones are barricaded or isolated to prevent anyone from entering. It is important that you only move in and around equipment with proper approval and that when doing so, you make eye contact with all operators. Loose clothing, apparel, or dangling objects have the potential to be caught in rotating equipment, so be sure all clothing and items are secure at all times. Materials that are secured by banding have the potential to whip back, or they can shift when cut. Be sure appropriate measures are taken to prevent injuries from occurring when the banding is cut. Personal protection equipment must be worn at all times. All guards must be in place and secure, and you must remain vigilant to stay out of the line of fire. <music> drugs and alcohol. Alcohol, drugs, or mind-altering substances are never allowed while working or driving. This includes the use, storage, or selling of any drugs. Some prescribed medications can have an effect on your work performance and your ability to work safely. If this is the case, notify your supervisor so that they can ensure you and your coworkers remain safe. Giving prescription drugs to another person or employee constitutes them as illegal drugs. If you see an employee who is showing signs of unusual or drastic behavioral change, or if you notice a possible case of drug or alcohol abuse on the job, report it to your supervisor immediately. 
anyone violating the La Chase drug and alcohol policy or in possession of firearms on site is subject to termination.